So now we're going to change gears a little bit and talk about feature engineering. Feature engineering is a hard subject to talk about because you really can't talk about a general theory of feature engineering. This is really a case by case, example by example process. So I'm going to talk about two examples of doing feature engineering on two different data sets. So first, I'm going to talk about data that comes from a setting called Quiz Bowl. So Quiz Bowl is a trivia game where two teams play against each other. A moderator reads a question. When a team knows the answer, they signal. This is called buzzing. And if they get it right, they win points. Otherwise, the rest of the question goes to the other team. There are hundreds of teams doing this in the US alone every weekend. But it's probably easier to see what's going on through an example. So I'm going to read a question, and when you think you know the answer to the question, you would interrupt me and say, aha, I know the answer, it's whatever. And then if you're right, you get points. So uh, see when you can answer this question. With Leo Szilard, he invented a doubly eponymous refrigerator with no moving parts. He did not take interaction with neighbors into account when formulating the theory of heat capacity. So Debye adjusted the theory for low temperatures. His summation convention automatically sums repeated indices and tensor products. His name is attached to the A and B coefficients for spontaneous and stimulated emission, the subject of one of his multiple groundbreaking 1905 papers. He further developed the model of statistics sent to him by Bose to describe particles with integer spin for 10 points, who is this German physicist best known for formulating the special and general theories of relativity. This question is constructed so that people who know more about the subject can answer the question earlier. And by the end of the question, most people will be able to answer the question. And the answer, of course, is Albert Einstein. It's often useful to distinguish Quiz Bowl from Jeopardy. So this is not Jeopardy. So while Jeopardy has buzzers, players can only buzz in at the end of the question. And so it doesn't discriminate knowledge as effectively as Quiz Bowl. And thus, Quiz Bowl questions are quite different. They have to be structured in this pyramidal fashion. And so the question is, how do you know if a guess is correct? And so we're going to turn a combination of a question that's interrupted at some point during the, the stream of clues into a set of features. And then we're going to treat that as a binary classification problem. Can you decide whether that guess was correct or not? And we'll investigate some of the features that help us do this well. This will also be the subject of homework number three. You'll be doing a Kaggle competition to try to determine whether guesses are correct or not. So I'll be providing a data set that has the following information. First, the text of the question so far. So this is a question at some point that's been interrupted. And then it will also have an associated Wikipedia page that could be the answer to the question. Now, sometimes that guess, the page, will match the true answer which is a Wikipedia page that is actually corresponding to the right answer for the question that's been interrupted. And I'll also give you the score of an IR system that looked at the Wikipedia page and said, how good is this page that we're guessing a match for the text of the question? So let's see what sorts of features we can build from this information. And hopefully these features will improve the ability to classify a question-guess combination as correct or not. So first, let's figure out where we're starting from. What if we had a classifier that just said, this guess is wrong? So on the data set that I provided you, that gives you a performance of 0.54. So any feature and any classifier that we learn from that feature should hopefully do better than this. Otherwise, it isn't helping. 
So first, let's take a look at the titles of the Wikipedia pages that are being guessed. One thing that you might notice is that the title of the Wikipedia pages often have information in parentheses that can help you tell whether the question is asking about this particular kind of Paris. So we create a feature that is a binary feature that is one if the page has the disambiguation in the text. So if we have a guess of Paris parentheses band and we see the word band is in the text of the question somewhere then the feature will be true or one and otherwise it will be false. And so this gives us a slight improvement over the baseline. We go from 0.54 to 0.58. On the course webpage, I've provided some R code that extracts this feature and also creates classifiers that use these features and evaluates them. The other thing that we can take a look at is for our guesses, how many incoming links does it have on Wikipedia? And so the more popular a page is, the more incoming links it will have. One thing that you can notice if you look at the data is that popularity is often a sign of a wrong answer. So the most popular pages on Wikipedia are about popular culture, celebrities, Pokemon, that sort of thing. And these are not often the answers to trivia questions, or at least academic trivia questions. So if we add in a feature that says how many incoming links does this page have, we get a slight improvement. We go from 0.54 to 0.56. But we can do a lot better if we take the log of the number of links that a page has. This is because this is a very long-tailed distribution and it can be more usefully represented as a feature if we take the log. And you can see that in the chart here that wrong answers are shifted to the right in terms of the number of incoming links that it has. And we've taken the log here. But what turns out to help quite a bit more is the information retrieval score comparing the text of the question to the text of the Wikipedia page that we're guessing. And so the higher the score, the better. And this feature alone gives us an accuracy of 0.75. So this is pretty good. And as you can see from the density plot, correct answers have a much higher score than wrong answers. One thing that I thought at least would help more was the amount of text that we've seen in the question. One would think that the more text you see, the more confident we should be about the answers that we're giving. By itself, it doesn't do very well. It only gives you a marginal improvement over the baseline. But if you combine it with the IR system score, it does great, giving us a score of 0.82, the best performance that we've had so far. There are other features that I provided you. Uh, the tournament the question was used in, the type of thing that the answer is, but you shouldn't be limited to these sources of information. You can find additional information from the web. You can use Wikipedia. As with the regression assignment, we'll be using Kaggle to compete within the class to see who can come up with the best classifier. So work on creating good classifiers and creating good features. To give you some further ideas about what you might want to do to create good features, I'm now going to talk about last year's feature engineering assignment and talk about some of the things that worked out well there.